Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We traveled all the way to Salem, Oregon, to the only maximum security penitentiary in the state of Oregon. That's right, the Oregon State Penitentiary. Why are we here? Well, the inmates made choices to put themselves inside the box. We kind of do the same when we're out here in reality. Let's go see if we can take their lessons and help us think outside the box. Check it out. We're here with correction officer for 24 years, Michael Van Patten. We're going to talk today about how do we think outside of the box so you don't end up in this kind of box. Taking all the things that they do in this city inside the penitentiary and analogize to what we do out there, showing that we can take things that they've learned in here, use them in the outside world so we can get outside of our own walls, unlike the walls they have here. So check us out as we get the opportunity to interview 24-year veteran Sergeant Michael Van Patten, correction officer here at the Oregon State Penitentiary. So part of what we're talking about here is these individuals have made choices in their lives that got them placed inside this particular box, if you will. Yes. Okay. And you can identify, as you said, mm -hmm. it's the only wall <laughs> facility. But outside in the real world, people put themselves in mental boxes all the time. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I'd like to talk to you about is, one, you guys, meaning the correctional officer, obviously have a, a set of routine that the inmates probably are aware of. What is it you do to keep it fresh? Because let's agree that outside, where we don't have quote unquote walls, we create our own walls and we tend to go asleep mm -hmm. and we kind of pass through our life. Here you've made the choice to do something that's habitual because we need it. And yet, what is the, some of the secrets that you guys use psychologically to not allow yourself to go to sleep? Because in your case, if you do, something catastrophic could happen. It's, it's the ability to keep your mind focused. Mm -hmm. not, it doesn't happen all the time. I mean, our job is 90% boredom. <laughs> And 10% panic and uh, all heck, you know, can break out. Right. So uh, keeping moving around, talking to other staff, even communications with the inmates to get a pulse of what they're doing and their attitudes and stuff help you stay alert. It sounds like you have some psychological part of you that has to be, you're kind of a, a coach, if you will. Well, it's the unique thing about this job is you're a chaplain, you're a mother figure if you're a female, a father figure, you're all of these right. different coaches and, and people rolled into one because you're dealing with so many personalities inside the facility. That's the part I want to talk about. You, As you just said right there, would you agree with me that, take, take the penitentiary aside for a second, what you just said there, we have the same amount of quote unquote people in our head, and I don't mm -hmm. mean from a schizophrenic point of view, but we all have voices in our head that talk to us, parts of our personality, mm -hmm. and we have to integrate those parts in order to socially function out there. When you're dealing with a part that's not functioning and you have to negotiate with, if you will, what is the first thing you guys would do to negotiate, let's say, with a, an inmate or an inmate group that's not going with the rest of the group to you? When you say verbal skills, are you Well, we about? communicate do's and don'ts. This is what's going to happen. I mean, the you're either going to do this, yes. I mean, that's all part of a, a pro-social environment is to teach them because 97% of these people in this box right. are going to be out in that box our, as our neighbors. Right. So in teaching them the consequences of their actions is the best way to learn, just like with a child. And that's why our recidivism rate in the state of Oregon is one of the lowest, because we deal with them. Just try to find my way. But when you say yeah, a, a pro-social environment, mm -hmm. I like the term, and if I can expand on that, would you say the first thing you're teaching the inmates is responsibility of the choice. Yes. And they have to become responsible for it. For their, for their actions. Their right. actions are what put them here. I mean, jury of their peers, right. based on their actions, put them inside the facility. They made bad choices. All right. Holding them accountable is the reason why they're here. Excellent. Now, to get them to change that course of thinking <laughs> by role modeling with us right. who are here as officers and even our non-correctional officer staff to show them that we come to work every day, we go home to our families, we do all this stuff, that's part of being pro-social mm -hmm. and the interaction with each other. What's the first thing you'd say that I've got to start with to start working through the different personalities to integrate them as a social group? You have to know who you are first. Excellent. Love because it. if you don't know who you are, these guys are going to pick you right apart. Right. And they're, some of them are very good street psychologists mm -hmm. and can take you apart because if you go into this, any facility like this across the United States, go in somebody you're not, they're going to see right through it and they're going to pick you apart. Excellent. So the first thing, guys, where have you heard this before? you got to know who you are, which <laughs> sounds to me like, and I'm going to kind of go esoteric if you don't mind, Sergeant. Is it possible that means you have to know mind, body, and spirit? And I'm not saying whatever religious value, but just who you are down here in your gut. Would you, you do. Agree? Yeah. You do. You have to know your limitations. You have to know who you are. 
and you have to be willing to admit those things, correct? Yes. Okay. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, right off the bat. First thing you need to know, hey, you got to learn to trust yourself, know who you are. Don't know what to do when they're back against the wall. So what would you define respect as and how would someone who's never really learned it or if, if they are maybe a new officer or to our people watching the show, what would you define respect as so maybe they can get a different perspective on how we can gain respect as a society? Well, respect is your actions, your attitude, your the way you communicate. Even saying, you know, thank you to an inmate or even admitting, hey, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. I mean, that builds respect, a man of your word. Uh, one wrong thing can lower that respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started here, back when I was 20 years old, my older brother was doing time. Here. Oh, you're kidding me. No. You know, he made choices. Right. And I made other choices. Wow. So, I mean, so with my fellow officers back then, uh, I had to do a lot more as far as keeping objective and dealing with these staff and inmates and, and, and build a reputation from there. What does a correctional officer do and what would you recommend when they first come in? What do you recommend they do and how to create balance in their life from a psychological, keeping the peace in their head point of view? What are the things that you would tell them? If I was new here and said, Sergeant, you know, I'm new to the job. How do I balance the two out there? What do you recommend they do to keep their mind calm and deal with the voices in their head? Your inner self comes first in your family. You've got to be able to separate the difference mm -hmm. because the wolf mentality or the wolf culture, you know, dog eat dog inside the facility, right. who's tougher than who, right. that type of thing will parallel and people will start to relate over years and years of working in this business to that culture and then take it to the culture outside and deal with and their families that way sometimes. Really? And the, the trick is being able to differentiate between that mm -hmm. and it's like putting on a coat, taking off the coat, leaving it here at work because there's some things that you do not want to talk about. It doesn't make good conversation at the Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> table. <laughs> you know, with your family, they look at you like you're weird. Right. So you've got or to scared find, of you. Or scared, or scared of, of you, I would think, yes. right? Well, I mean, a lot of it. You know. got, I mean, I'm looking in your eyes right here. I, I, I'm streetwise. I've been around the block. I look at you and I go, I get it that I would not want to tangle with you. I wouldn't want to upset you or piss you <laughs> off. It's a persona. Well, the persona. <laughs> well, it's one, it's one of my ego voices. building, you know, uh, boosts. It's one of, the, one of the voices in your head, right? Yeah. I don't know about you guys out there, but I'm getting psyched, and here's why. You know, you don't have to be in this box, and you don't have to be in the box out the, outside out there in the quote-unquote real world. You heard today from uh, Sergeant Van Patten right here at the uh, Oregon State uh, Penitentiary. These people made choices to get here. Rule number one. Be aware of who you are, two, respect yourself, respect the people around you, and respect the choices that you make, and hey, be respectful that you have the opportunity to make choices, because you know what, those choices will be taken away if you make a different choice and end up in this box. And on top of that, keep your life active, keep communication, respect, honor, and integrity. You keep hearing it over and over again as themes here at the Get Psych Show. That's how you start to manage all the voice here. I want to thank Sergeant Van Patten, the Oregon State Penitentiary, and all the officers, uh, men and women, who make sure that these uh, inmates have the opportunity to reintegrate back into our world for the choices they made and let the past be the past. I'm Dr. Travis Fox. We'll see you next time right here on Get Psyched.